Welcome back everyone to another cigar review. My name is John aka Cigar Alchemist and tonight I am excited to be reviewing and showcasing to you the Gran Habano George Rico El Enemigo. So if y'all missed it, we actually had George Rico on our new wave infamous smoke show live stream a couple weeks ago. George is a super cool guy and they also sent all the new wave guys these Gran Habano sampler packs so we could just dig in more to the brand. So this is my first venture into Gran Habano, at least in terms of a review. I did smoke the 20th anniversary a couple weeks ago and I gotta say it was a banger. I was thinking about doing a review on it but there's already some reviews from the new wave guys on it so I decided tonight to go with this L and Amigo. So to get into this blend specifically, George went a different route with the cigar. So typically they manufacture all the cigars in their own factory in Honduras. And he decided with this El Enemigo, he wanted to kind of go his uh, Ronin way. And so he actually used the factories that Davidoff uses to produce cigars for their clients. The speculation out there is, is that they use the same factory that Abo uses. Gran Habano and George also wanted to create a line of like what they would call ultra premium cigars. So the El Enemigo is one of them and the 20th anniversary, <clears throat> and the 20th anniversary is the other. And I gotta say, this has a super premium look to it. So let's get into the specs really quickly of this thing and then I'll go into showing y'all a closer look at the cigar. This is a 5x52, it's called the Insulto. So I'm assuming L and Amigo means like enemy and insulto probably means insult, the insult. In terms of blending profile, it is an Ecuador Habano wrapper over an Ecuadorian Habano binder in a similar region or even the same region. And then it has Nicaraguan, Dominican, and Colombian fillers. But real quick, let's take a closer look at this cigar. All right, y'all, let's take a closer look at this L and Amigo from George Rico. Very premium looking cigar from the color of the wrapper to the bands this awesome foot band here with the GR initials for George Rico. Very cool. There's a closer look at the primary band. I love the guys fighting look like Spartan warriors or something like that. Either way, overall, a very nice presentation. All right, y'all. I'm excited to get into this thing. I'm really looking forward to trying one of Grand Habano's more premium lines. So without further ado, I'll see y'all at light up. All right, I'll see how easily this foot band comes off. We're good. All right, y'all, put it in the comments. What are your thoughts on Gran Habano? Have you had this L and Amigo? And what did you think? For me, I said this in a short, maybe I said it in the live stream, but Gran Habano has really flown under the radar for me. Um, but everyone just really raves about them in terms of being just a stalwart brand in the cigar world, especially for an affordable price. They have such a great lineup, apparently. Um, so I'm really excited to explore this brand more. Plus the fact George was a super cool guy. It was great chatting with him on the Infamous Smoke Show live stream. If y'all hadn't seen that episode, I highly recommend it. George is super passionate about the cigar world, and it just really emanates throughout that whole episode. So it was definitely a really good one, a really educational one. Um, and I know we'll have George again on at some point. All right, y'all, a few puffs in, and uh, yeah, it's a really good cigar. I'm not getting a lot of spice. Maybe that picks up. For me, it's definitely uh, like a medium earth cigar. It's not like mineral earth or anything, just like a nice earthiness to it. Really rich, bright tobacco. That's how I would describe it. So yeah, you get this nice tobacco core, but it's like a very bright tobacco to me, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But also getting like a little bit of hints of nuttiness, like a roasted nut, and I'm even getting a little bit of a floral note as well it's just barely there it's, and i'm not getting it on every draw but we'll see how that develops uh so far we're off to a great start but let's see how this thing continues to develop i'll see you on the first third man i gotta say the cigar is not what i expected and i don't mean that necessarily in a bad way it's just different um uh, i'll start with construction though it's it's really good so here's the burn line in the ash uh, a little bit of wavy burn line at times, but it self-corrects every time. That hash stack is, is holding on real firm. The draw is a bit tight. I will say that's my only criticism so far in terms of the construction. It's tight. Uh, I think the cigar is pretty damn packed. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a little tight for my preference, but it's not the end of the world. Flavor-wise, it's good. It's just 
like I said, not what I was expecting. So um, I'm not getting too much sweetness out of the cigar. I'm not getting chocolate. What I am getting, first of all, it's an earthy cigar. And, and not like dark mineral or peaty earth. It's like a medium earth, more like grass and hay, or some people say dry leaves. It's, it's more like that. There's almost like a saltiness to it as well. A little bit of butter like roasted nut it's like a roasted pine nut for me like literally i'm getting like this like almost like pine kind of accent to it touch just a touch of leather and just a tiny bit of white pepper as well so um towards the beginning of the first third like kind of towards light up there's a little bit of roasted coffee i'm not really getting that anymore um but yeah very earthy cigar a little bit of savory, not too much sweet yet. Maybe it'll come out in the second, third. Let's find out. I'll see y'all there. All right, y'all, I'm back. I gotta give y'all an update. Uh, you see, I don't have a cigar in my hands. Everything went great with the L and Amigo. I just finished it. To be very honest with y'all, I've had some stuff going on in my life. Uh, I'm not gonna go into what it is right now. I might make a video at some point, but I needed to take this call. Uh, needed to talk some things out with a family member. And uh, yeah, was much needed, so. Appreciate y'all being patient with me in this review. I'm still going to give y'all my thoughts. I was paying attention to it while I was on the phone, but it's gonna be a little bit of a different ending because of that, so I apologize. To give y'all the breakdown though of how the second and the final third went, this cigar for me was very consistent. It was linear, which isn't a bad thing, right? I've said this before on my channel. Like, there are some cigars that are bunched and made to be more linear, and as long as the flavor is good, fine by me. So in terms of the second and final third, there wasn't too much change. A little bit of sweetness came out towards the back end of the second third and into the final third. I never really got dark chocolate. Some people say that it, it my palate didn't pick it up. So it just might be just different palates, right? Uh, for me, it was just kind of like a nice natural tobacco sweetness, but the main notes on the palate remained that medium earth. It had a toasty kind of characteristic to it. It's like a toasted wheat, in earth or grass and hay, kind of in that spectrum, right? Uh, the pine nut kind of dipped back, but I still got a lot of nice buttery notes. I still got that salt. Also got a little bit of cedar wood and just a nice white pepper throughout the cigar. So now I'm gonna give you all my final thoughts and a final rating. So overall, this was a, a pretty medium cigar. I would say even closer to the mild side of the spectrum, um, but it was medium, I would say medium in body and strength. In terms of my final thoughts, uh, this is definitely a premium cigar. Very well constructed. The draw remained tight throughout the cigar, but it was never an issue. So uh, more of a preferential thing, but the combustion was really good. Um, it just was a bit of a tight draw, at least, at least mine was. But it definitely had a premium feel to it. And the cigar is more on the savory side of the spectrum, again, at least for my palate. So overall, to give this thing a final rating, I am rating the El and Amigo from Gran Habano in Insulto, or the Insult, a recommended rating. Solid cigar, not gonna break the bank. It is in that more premium kind of category in terms of price, but it's not crazy expensive. And it did provide some really nice flavor notes. I really liked the pine nut, the butteriness, the saltiness. Um, it was a good cigar, so it didn't blow my mind. So that's why I'm not putting it in that highly recommended or all-time classic, um, but absolutely cigar we're trying. I want to thank everyone at Gran Habano for sending it to me. I'm excited to try more of your cigars and to showcase them on my channel. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I appreciate it. And thank you to anyone willing to consider supporting me in the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.